Okay, there's actually three different levels of review. Um, unlike zoning, where you can either have town zoning or county zoning or municipal zoning, there can actually be overlapping levels of um, subdivision review. So there's state level review, the majority of counties exercise uh, subdivision review. And then at the local level, I'd say a quarter to a third um, of, let's see, actually towns, a quarter of towns have subdivision regulations and maybe about half of, um, um, just over half of villages. And I'd say the vast majorities of, of cities have subdivision regulations. Okay. So I wanna use this to test your knowledge here. Uh, I haven't shared the answer to this. Um, so I want you to reflect on this. Which of these do you think would be considered a subdivision under state law? And you can type in the chat box, okay? So let's say we have a 25 acre parcel and we're creating three one acre parcels all within one year, okay? That's option one. Option two, let's say we create six one acre parcels uh, and we create that within a period of five years, okay? And then the third option, let's say we completely divide our 25 acres, we create five five acre parcels all in one year. What do you think, which one of these would qualify as a state defined subdivision? Okay, so I'm seeing two, a couple of threes, that's one, all of them. All right, well, let me share the answer. <laughs> it's number two is the correct answer. Okay, so a subdivision according to state law is the creation of five or more parcels of one and a half acre or less within a period of five years, okay? So the only one that actually qualifies here is the second example here. The state has a fairly small uh, definition for how it defines a lot, a one and a half acre um, so you actually do have the ability, and especially I've seen this at the county and town level, uh, to define it differently, to include uh, larger parcels. Okay, so let's first talk about the state level, and then we can talk about how you can customize a local ordinance. Okay, so at the state level, the state is really providing um, fairly minimum standards for subdivisions. They're more concerned about mapping and high level public safety. Um, so they were doing for surveying, layout, mapping, and plat submittal requirements. Okay, and again, here's that definition. This is when the state gets involved. You could actually write in, if you change your local subdivision um, definition, you could actually write in that you want the state to review uh, whenever um, they meet your definition of a subdivision. Okay, so again, how might you do that? Um, you could change the size of parcels, the number of parcels. You could even include things like a subdivision occurs anytime a road is created along with the land division. Okay. You can also have um, public improvement requirements. Okay. That's something that's a town, a village, or a city can have. Okay. So I mentioned there's these three different layers of overlapping review. When that occurs, um, let's say potentially you have a town and a county that are both reviewing, or let's say you have a town as well as a municipality acting in its extraterritorial jurisdiction. Um, the most restrictive provision from any given ordinance applies. Okay. So again, high level terminology. I want you to be com comfortable with the main terms that we use here. So if you hear the word plat, all that means that's a map of a subdivision. Okay. Who does what when it comes to subdivision ordinances? Um, so in terms of the plan commission role, ordin the ordinance itself, amendments to it, as well as subdivision plats must be reviewed by the plan commission. So this is likely a role for you, okay? Uh, the governing body may also delegate either preliminary or final plat approval authority to the plan commission, okay? They could keep that for themselves. They could ask for a recommendation or they could completely delegate that and give that responsibility to you as a plan commission member. The one is exception is that when there's final plats that dedicate streets, highways, or other lands, then it must have final approval by the governing body. Okay. 
This is a typical process here. The only two steps that are outlined in state statutes are preliminary and final plat approval. I do recommend for many communities to have a pre-application conference. It's a great opportunity to uh, informally review uh, subdivision ideas and to spot problems up front to help educate the developer about what your requirements are. Okay. There are also state statute timelines that you need to act within. The one thing I want you to take away from this, let's say you're a smaller community, you're not, let's say you don't have a whole lot of subdivision plots that occur, or maybe there's something that occurs in your extraterritorial jurisdiction if you're a, a village or a city, and you're not really familiar with how to proceed. Act on it. <laughs> take a look. If there's a preliminary plot that's submitted and you'd never asked uh, for that step to happen, if one is submitted, you should look at it because what happens if you ignore it is that you are essentially acting to approve it, okay? And so once a preliminary plat is approved, the final plat is entitled to approval if it substantially uh, complies with that preliminary plat, okay? So if you receive something, re please review it. Okay. The last term I want you to be familiar with is a CSM or a certified survey map. Okay, so anything that does not meet the state definition or your local definition of a subdivision, any other land divisions, typically, um, you know, based on number of size, maybe three or fewer or very large lots that are created, go through an expedited process um, where you're surveying it, monumenting and mapping it by a professional land surveyor, um, and then filing with the county register of deeds. Okay, again, if if streets or other land are dedicated to the governing body, um, you should be acting on this and you have 90 days to act. The best place uh, for additional information on subdivisions, land divisions is with the Wisconsin Department of Administration. They have a plat review manual that is consistently updated and it's an excellent source of data and um, guidance. All right, so that brings us to the end, um, the three major tools that we've talked about. Uh, I know that Lynn has been monitoring the chat um, and I want to pause here to see if Lynn, if there are any questions that rose to the top that I may not have answered throughout. Yeah, I think there are a couple of them, Becky. Actually, the first one is a comment that I thought was excellent that I just wanted to reiterate. Um, when you ask about the purposes of zoning, um, one person responded that zoning creates a template for communities to move forward in an organized manner, considering the needs of everyone in the community. And I haven't heard zoning defined exactly that way in the past. And I just thought that was useful. Yeah, very helpful. I like that. Thank you for sharing. I think you could actually make a very similar statement about planning too. Uh, and yes, that's exactly what these tools are meant for. It provides um, kind of a a known process for how the community moves forward. Right. Um, one question that I think it would be helpful for you to respond to is there was a question, why have a comprehensive plan if it seems a person can come in and request a rezone? And you talked about the possibility of having rezone standards. Um, maybe you wanna talk about how, you know, what happens if there aren't rezone standards? Um, and any other, you know, response you would have to that question. Can you repeat the very first part of the question itself? Sure. Why have a comp plan if it seems yeah. a person can come in and request or receive a rezone? Well, actually, the, the plan itself is helping to guide those rezoning decisions. Um, so the first time around that many communities uh, adopted comprehensive plans, Wisconsin kind of did it backwards. Most communities had zoning before they had plans, except for maybe some of the larger municipalities. And so they said, we're gonna regulate and we're just gonna think about today. And they weren't really thinking about tomorrow. And so the comprehensive planning law is requiring communities to step back and think about what that future vision is, maybe how the community grows, maybe how it evolves over time. Not all communities are able to grow. Um, and so it provides that guidance to think about um, how different land use patterns relate within the community. So the plan is not about stopping growth. It's not about stopping change. It's about guiding it and thinking about where we want to be in the future. And so 
communities, I think, need to take intentional steps to, if they want to use that plan as a guide, to think about if, if zoning is one of your major implementation tools, which it is for many communities, how is that plan going to be used to provide guidance? When is it appropriate for change? When is it appropriate for the community to evolve and so forth? And that's what planning can do um, by looking ahead and providing some of those, whether it's rezoning standards or um, highlighting, um, maybe there's important uh, resource or utility or infrastructure constraints, highlighting those things when you're not under the pressure to make a specific rezoning decision. It's easier to sit back and reflect on those things outside of the specific decision-making process. Sure. Um, another question that just came in a minute ago is how to handle land division requests if they also involve a request for rezoning yeah. one of the divided properties. You can actually handle those concurrently. Um, Technically, um, you should have a separate public hearing for each one, um, but you could have one conditioned upon the other and you could have them both occur in the same night. And th that's very common uh, where, um, you know, both of those are handled together. That was the example I gave um, when we were talking about consistency. Sure. And then do you want to comment briefly on what's included in an official map? I don't think you talked about that tonight. I completely ignored that tool because um, to a certain extent, it's becoming less common. It's falling out of favor a little bit. But the idea behind an official map is that you are mapping and reserving future areas for public use. So perhaps you're laying out where roads are going to be located where parks are going to be located. Maybe you, you lay out um, that you have an airport and you need this airport approach uh, area. And essentially you're saying by me mapping that as a municipality, um, you can't develop there, okay? So what has really taken its place is, is the idea of the future land use map, as well as when subdivision plats are uh, submitted, some communities will wrap that into uh, their official map. And so they'll say, these are the streets that have been dedicated. This is now our official map uh, or a, a part of it. Okay. So there are still plenty of examples. I'd say it's more common in municipalities. Okay. Um, there is one more question that just came up. Your choice if you want to <laughs> work on addressing that one or if you want to wrap one up. That very specific. I'm very happy um, for the person who asked that question to reach out by email, and I'd be happy to help answer that individually. It may be something that's quite specific to your ordinance. Um, I do also want to highlight Karen's been posting some helpful resources in here. Um, there's a webinar resources page, which she's provided a link to, as well as the Plan Commission and Zoning Board handbooks. The recording from tonight will be posted within a few days. It takes a little bit of time to process it. So you can find a copy of that on the resources page. You are absolutely welcome and encouraged to share that if there's other plan commission members uh, locally that you'd like to share it with, I would encourage that. So I wanna thank you for taking your evening to join us. Um, oh, we do have, Lynn is reminding me, we do have one last yeah. optional I'm set of demographic get that questions. that second poll <laughs> to come up and I'm, I haven't found it. Oops. Let me see if I can launch it as well. Perfect. I just saw it pop up. So um, we have a few uh, demographic questions. The results will not be shared, but I would encourage you if you could share. Um, we use this for reporting purposes. Thank you again for joining us. Uh, you're welcome to log off after you've answered that last question. Thanks all.